Well, hello and welcome to the latest episode of Between the Sundays. Uh, this is just an, an attempt on our part to extend Sundays into the week and to continue the conversations from the message or things that have been happening in our church or things that are about to happen in our church. And so uh, I'm glad that you're joining us today, whether you're watching uh, on our YouTube channel or you're listening uh, on an audio uh, platform somewhere. Uh, today, I've got Garrett Snyder, who's our Director of Communications and Missions, and I've got Pastor Trevor Heineman, who's our Executive Pastor of Operations with us. And uh, we've, uh, we're have we going to talk a little bit about the last couple Sundays first, but um, just excited to have you guys as a part of this. I know both of you have been on here a couple of times, especially you, and then obviously when Pastor Trevor joined the staff, uh, rejoined the staff, been on a couple of times. But um, I'd love to ask a starter question that has nothing to do with anything we're going to talk about today, and I didn't prep you for this. Does it have to do with why I'm the only one without a water bottle? I don't know. I, I don't, no water bottle. I, I'm thirsty, a, and I don't yeah. even need a drink, but it's psychological. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not related to water bottles. So um, I'll throw it out on the table. Uh, what I'd like to know is who was your favorite teacher in school? And I'm going somewhere with this, but who was your favorite teacher in school? Name and grade if you got it. That's tough. Uh, I had to suck up to a lot of them, so yeah. we got pretty close. Uh, I would say... Uh, Who was in charge of detention, Garrett? No, I'm Hey, kidding. I will say this. Uh, I, I mean, I got detention, but yeah. I never got suspended or anything. Oh, that's like good. That, so, that's yeah, good. I got suspended. Good. That's a story for another day. I yeah. got suspended in eighth yeah. grade. Yeah, I did pretty good there. So uh, I would say for me, it was uh, my preschool teacher. Okay. Her name is Miss Alice Hathcock. Okay. Uh, that's her... Uh, we're still friends on Facebook. Nice. It's pretty wild. That's amazing. Uh, you were friends then on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I was wow. in pretty early on. Way back. Uh, yeah. Beginner stages. Top eight in MySpace. Yeah, yeah. Go that sure. back. Uh, no, we uh, we reconnected, like, when I was, I think when I was in high school, and that became a thing. But uh, she was just a super sweet lady. Um, even at that young of an age, I just remember just kind of like a, um, just like a almost like a motherly kind of just kind of figure hmm. um, there at school, just real kind and generous um that just always kind of stuck with me that's yeah, awesome yeah trevor what about you so i was homeschool for a while so can't it's say awkward your, when i don't mom. say my mom <laughs> um can i have two ish sure, sure sure all right so i had one uh miss layton and i would say miss layton only because i really feel like she in a incredible way like challenged us mm-hmm. um like challenged us to think outside the box challenged us to think outside of like our normal way of thinking and like her class was probably my hardest class yet I feel like I like succeeded the most out of life because of her class what grade was that uh so she was well I went to a smaller yeah, private yeah, school yeah. so it was a couple of grades but couple, like she yeah. was English English okay um yeah. and so she was that and then I would say secondly was uh coach McCarty okay um just you know he was the athletic director that yeah. taught bible and taught with like you know <laughs> uh but like just he just invested in us yeah. as men and just yeah. connected with us and like really just taught us that like good. there's a lot to learn in life and like there's a lot more outside of just the classroom of just life principles. That's great. That he taught us like on and off the court, on and off the field and in and out of the classroom. So I actually met Coach McCarty. Our our older sons played baseball together when they were really little. Now they're both yeah. playing in college, but um, Mike's a great guy. Yeah. But I, I was thinking about mine is Miss Ireland. She was my ninth grade English teacher, but she was also over like student government. And so I got to participate in that a couple of times in high school. But um, she challenged us, but yeah. she also was the first teacher. Now, maybe it was because I was entering into high school when I first got her as a teacher. She was the first teacher that I felt like tre- treated me not like a little kid. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so, you know, we, we've said a number of times over the years, and I, I read this quote a number of years ago, but like students flock to the oldest person that takes them that's seriously. Right. Like Miss Ireland was the first teacher that I, I felt like she didn't treat us like an, an adult, but she didn't treat us like a little kid. Yeah. And so there was this sense of like, man, she respects us. Everything she didn't sees funnel through that's mom right. and dad. Yeah, yeah. She sees potential in us, yeah. well, you know, whatever that is. And we could laugh and have fun in her class, but it, it was there was structure to it. Um, but I was thinking about this a little bit and kind of the reason I even opened with that is obviously we're, we've just come through the end of the school year. Um, you know, my kids have finished up with school or whatever. So we've been at awards banquets and we've kind of seen the end of school year banquets we've hosted as a church, which maybe we'll talk about in a second. But I was just thinking about the incredible teachers in our community. We have a number of them within our church family, but even outside of that, like just the teachers that I've seen in the schools and. Um, and I'm just thankful for teachers. I know sometimes they get a bad rap. Yeah, they're incredible. Um, but man, they are, they've devoted themselves to just investing in children, students of, of all ages, you know. And 
So I, I really was just kind of reflecting this morning. Corey and I talked a little bit about like transitions in school, different times we moved yesterday when we were in the car. And it made me think about some teachers this morning that I was thankful for. And so if you're a teacher, you're in education, uh, whether homeschool parent, you're educating your own children, or through some type of preschool, kindergarten, grade school, middle school, high school, college, um, just know that we appreciate you, we value you, and how you invest in, in students. So speaking of students, about uh, two Sundays ago, we had our youth takeover day, really great day, a lot of energy. Um, pastor Carson, who's our youth pastor, spoke on that Sunday, did a great job out of the story of Esther, just talking about like a an older person, a mentor, investing in speaking truth and really challenging a younger generation person and, and just did a great job. But um, Garrett, I'd love to hear from you. Like, what was your takeaway from the day? Kind of what, what did you see, feel, hear, you know, maybe what, what did we feel from a church family perspective as well? Sure. Yeah. So just being like, uh, I'm, I'm involved with the youth group on Sunday nights. So um, it's always exciting uh, when we do these, uh, these Sundays uh, each year, um, just to really see like, you know, we go through camp in the summer. Uh, that's where like, you know, usually a, a handful or, you know, a good amount of our kids, like feel like they experience their calling yeah. and things like that. It's always interesting for me to see, those kids that experience that at camp and then kind of like how that plays out, like in that next like year of their life. Yeah. And I think even in some of that, we saw like a few of those kids like kind of like playing a little bit of that role on student takeover Sunday, which is cool to see. We, we've got, you know, there was a, a kid, you know, on stage leading worship that, I mean, you, I mean, it was just the most like yeah. quiet, yeah, just I reserved kinda, yeah, kid right. when he first started coming and to see him leading not only, you know, on Sunday evenings, but in front of our entire church on Sunday, yeah. Um, it's just, it's been incredible to see. Uh, but I thought the team did great. The kids really stepped in and, you know, kind of took charge of the, uh, the roles that they were playing with the, you know, we kind of paired them up with some of our other GT members that are typically serving on Sunday mornings. And uh, I thought I, they did a great job just welcoming our church and serving in those roles that we placed them in, in, in production and I agree. Uh, online and worship from like a, just a church perspective, you don't have a kid in the youth group yeah. and you're not, you have been involved in youth ministry, yeah. obviously, but Gary was saying like, he's involved right now. Just from a church perspective, like why do we do this? What how do, why do our people love it? What what's kind of the takeaway for us? Yeah, as I a mean, church? obviously, you know, the name of the church is Generations Church, yeah. and I think it it allows a Sunday every single year to just highlight, you know, sometimes students. I mean, there are students that serve every single week, That's but right. it's in a kid's classroom or it's on the media and production team, or it is a kid that's helping lead worship, or a kid that's on Yes, there was, but it's a Sunday of allowing everybody to walk in the door and just go, man, there's a lot of students around here that yeah. are making a difference. And we're actually making a difference in the life. We talk about regularly on Sunday morning from the platform, like, you know, youth takes place on Sunday nights and Pastor Carson's doing this with his team and we'll show pictures and videos, but it's incredible to just give an opportunity of just like, yeah. look at all of these kids wearing the same t-shirt. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's chaotic and it's fun and it's, you know, there's a lot of extra energy. But I think it's just super special of just allowing everybody that walks through the door that gives financially or prays or like they've made some investment yeah. in youth to be able to see like, man, they're really making a difference here in these kids' lives. Well, and I think that was for me. I mean, there were a ton of students in the blue shirts <laughs> that we had. I love the color too, it was Tar Heel blue. But um, but it did for me, I, I think I, I, this is a crazy thing to say, but like there were so many students serving that I was like, man, I don't know who that is. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know who that kid is. Yeah. And I've got kids in the youth group, and I feel like we're pretty involved in it. But there were just so many For faces sure. that I think showed us like the the, the span or the yeah. reach of our youth ministry now, which I think is great. And, and we don't have the biggest youth group by any stretch, but but just how many kids are becoming more and more involved, and to see them serving um, on stage yeah. in the lobby upstairs. But I, I think to be reminded, it almost had the opposite effect. To be reminded that there are students serving every week. For sure. And we said that on Sunday. You just referenced it. And so I'm thankful that at Generations Church, it's not just the older generations yeah. that serve and then the younger yeah. generations just kind of show up. Like, we've got kids serving, you know, throughout the every throughout the service. building every single service every single Sunday. So that was a really, really great day of celebration uh, for, for our church family. Then this past week, we had what we call a standalone sermon kind of a standalone Sunday. It was Memorial Day weekend. We, we honored those families that have lost loved ones and those that have given their lives in service uh, so that we can experience freedom. But we also just kind of dove into a story or passage of Scripture that we've looked at a little bit this spring um, already a couple of times, once after Easter, um, and just looked at this idea of in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, 
that there wasn't just the one tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but there were two trees. There was a tree of life as well. Yeah. And uh, and I'll talk about some things there, but just some thoughts generally about Sunday and and kind of the the kind of general feelings from our church family about where we were at. Yeah, I mean, I just uh, the whole sermon sermon Sunday was incredible. I thought you really did. I mean, you even referenced at the beginning like we spent a lot of time, but I feel like you kind of summarized a lot of what we spent a lot of spring talking about and kind of closed yeah. a little bit of that chapter as we looked towards and made some really cool connections yeah. from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Yeah. Um I took I took some notes and really my wife takes great <laughs> notes. Um, but I her. loved, I'm losing some of her notes. Yeah. I love like your second point of just like changing our focus yeah. and really just like focusing on Jesus. And like, as we go into the summer, I mean, it's so hard to be focused on so many other things right. and we're going to miss Sundays from vacations and things, but really just like prioritizing, like right here at the beginning of summer, like just focus on Jesus. It's good. Like just turn all the distractions away and just focus on him. I thought that was super powerful. Well, and I think I think for all of us, you know, we talked about the, uh, there's two trees, but you got the yeah. tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life. And like, if we focus on good and evil, like yeah. if that's, con- I mean, we, we all know people that it's like, they're always talking about how bad the world is. Yeah. They're always mm-hmm. talking about, you know, sin issues, or they're always talking, whatever that is. And those things are real. And for so sure. we don't just put our head in the sand and act like they don't exist. But we're going to choose to focus on life and life yeah. to the full, life more abundantly, life in Jesus Christ, and uh, and I think that that's where our, when our focus is there, it helps us to do what number one was, which yeah. is fall in love with Jesus. Yeah, like if I just fall in love with Jesus and I just really focus on Him, His goodness, His mercy, His grace, yeah. living that kind of abundant life, like I really do feel like that helps to shape um, our lives into this more fulfilling type thing. And it's not again. There are struggles. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Like we, rec- there's a spiritual battle taking place. But I know who won that spiritual battle. I, I know who's winning that spiritual battle, even when it feels like it's not happening. And I love just the mentality, the you know, the visual of like, you know, which tree are you hanging out near? Right. I mean, like it for me, it's not a tree. Like I'm yeah. not, I'm not struggling with the sin of eating fruit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. But like, you know, what is that tree metaphorically in yeah. my life of like? Just stop being around it. Yeah, that's right. Um, like, surround yourself with healthy people. Surround yourself with people that, like, they're trying to get closer to God as yeah. well. And stop hanging around a tree that you know, like, yeah. nothing good is going to yeah. come out from this. Well, and the, at the end, we talked about the C.S. Lewis quote, but it's this idea, and I'm paraphrasing now, but it's, like, this lifelong journey, this struggle mm-hmm. for mankind to just find something other than God to make them happy. Yeah. And, and while God's not, like, our happy genie, there is the sense that like when we are chasing after and pursuing God, like there is a sense of joy, which we're going to talk about all summer in a few minutes. We'll talk about that. But like joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in life. And when hard times come, hard things come, bad things happen, like we lean further into that, not run away from it, rather than just constantly hanging out by the wrong tree, the wrong people, the wrong decisions that have consequences that lead towards potentially, you know, the wages of sin is death. And so, you know, I, I do feel like for me, that message, and I and I said it at the beginning of both services, but that message was one that I've I've, I've kind of I've been holding on to for a little while. I, I heard uh, a, a similar message, or at least out of that context, the passage of scripture several years ago, and I've got a note in my phone of just things that you know speak to me, or that may, I may want to preach at one point, or I want to come back to. And uh, and earlier this year, when we read Genesis two and three in our Bible reading plan, like, I just, I was like, man, sometime early this year, I want to spend some time on this passage, and That's cool. And I do feel like that it it helped our church to, again, kind of close the chapter on some of the things we've been dealing with over the last few months, and move into this summer, which is where I want us to go now, but move into this summer, and really spend some time, which we try to do every summer, like in a book study, or a, a subject from scripture, um, that'll t- kind of carry us through the whole summer. So we're going to spend all summer, June and July, with one uh, caveat, in the book of Philippians, which is one of my favorite books of the New Testament. Um, I love the book of Philippians. I love Paul's letter. I love his constant circling back to like joy, joy and struggle, joy among people, thanks, thankfulness for people, people he loves, um, and then really some challenges to, to who we are, our motives for living, um, how we look at other people. So we're going to spend the summer months in the book of Philippians. And I think Sunday for me, and maybe I'm overthinking it, but the way my brain works, Sunday for me felt like, okay, if we're cho- if we're falling in love with Jesus and choosing our focus, like where do we go? Yeah. Let's spend this summer like choosing yeah. joy. Yeah. Let's spend this summer like just leaning into yeah. the goodness it of felt God. Like it on ramp into the it series, did. So. It felt like, hey, this is where we're headed. Let's choose this. Let's let's kind of turn away from those things which are trying to pull us backwards and the enemy trying to ensnare us. 
and let's choose joy. Let's live life that God's intended to us for us. And then, you know, what we've got planned, some of the things we're going to do this fall. So one of the things that we did Sunday, and we'll talk about Philippians again in just a second, but one of the things we did Sunday is we went to our summer service schedule. Um, so we went from three services to two. Um, we did this primarily because we know people travel and, you know, vacations and all that, but um, it wasn't just to manage crowds. It really was to help our team be able to serve yeah. people well. Um, and so talk to us about our new service times and really just the heart behind what we're doing, you know, for these two services for the summer. Yeah. I mean, ultimately we know everybody over the course of summer is going to miss a week or two. I mean, I talked to one of our, uh, G team members Sundays, like, Hey, I want to let you know, I'm going to be gone for the next six weeks Whew, yeah. for vacations and sports teams yeah. and, you know, all the different things that, and that's kind of the reality for a lot of our teams. And sure. so just to take the, the pressure off of some of our G team members and kids and, and guest services and even, you know, allowing the worship and production team to not do three services and just have to do two for a season. You know, it's really to just help our teams. And, you know, we realize that as they travel, that means other people that just attend the church currently, they're also going to be traveling. So crowds may be a little lighter in the summer, but, you know, we'll see how long we're able to stay it too. I mean, even Sunday, like holiday weekend, like it was still both services, um, you know, really healthy attendance. And so I think we'll just, Play it's, by ear. It's not, you know, like I had a, a friend we were talking this last week. It's not that our attendance isn't strong or healthy. It's actually, we had two of the highest Sunday attendance yeah. in the history of our church, except for holidays, maybe the two highest in May. Yeah. So it's like our attendance has been fantastic, yeah. but we do feel like this is the right move for us this summer Absolutely. because of our teams um, to really help us to kind of, you know, pair some things into like the healthiest mode for yeah. us for the summer. Now, If we see increased attendance and capacity issues, parking issues, which I talked about Sunday, I I really challenged our people to kind of park on the extreme ends of our parking lot to create more open parking near the doors. But um, if we do see that, then we'll jump right back into three and just do everything we can to continue to serve people. And then our plan is to go back to three after our summer service schedule, you know, later at the end of July and into August. But um, I just think for, man, there was something really cool about just being in those two services. And I think everybody that had kind of split into three, some of them coming back together mm-hmm. in two yeah. and seeing people they hadn't seen in a little office. Like, Hey, I used to, I used to, I've been attending the eight <laughs> fifteen. Yeah. I didn't even know you still went to our church. I thought like, oh, you no. left. Yeah. So it's like, no, I just go to, and I've been going to nine 30. Um, I think for us, it's the right move for summer. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think that it, it's a healthy move for us to really kind of get ourselves set for yeah. where we're heading in the fall and the service times we're going to look at for the fall to really try to increase our capacity to serve more people. Um, I'm so thankful for what God has done in our church these last, I'll say nine months or so, but really since last, the end of last July into August, um, we've seen our church double in size, you know, and, and even more, most, some of our bigger weeks, like it's, it's one and a half, two times what it was. Um, And so I'm thankful for that, but we want to continue to create space. One of my, you know, kind of driving scriptures or stories about this idea is the prophet who comes to the widow. She's got debt. She's got her sons. The, the, the accountants are showing up. The, you know, the bail bondsmen are coming. They're going to take the boys to, to work to pay off the debt. And, uh, and the prophet says, go and get all the empty jars that you can, and then lock yourself in the house and begin to pour the little bit of oil that you do have into those empty jars. And the scripture tells us in that story that as long as she presented empty jars, the oil right. continued to flow. But whenever she ran out of empty jars, the oil stopped. And we've just said for us as a church, as a staff, how we want to facilitate what God's doing here is we want to continue to create emptiness. And as we create emptiness, both in our soul and in our facility, we're asking God to fill that empty space. That's right. God, pour out your spirit upon us. Fill us with all that you have for us. But also as we create empty space, whether that's a new service or more seats or another kid's classroom, which we opened another a month or two ago, like as we create emptiness, God, we're asking you to help that's fill right. that with people yeah. that need to hear, you know, the gospel message. And so that's our heart behind it. That's what we're, we're hoping to do. So it seems a little counterintuitive to pare it down for the summer, but we think this is the right move to prepare us for where yeah, we're headed. Sure. Um, and so I'm excited about that. But uh, man, thanks, thanks for being a part of the, the, the episode today. And, you know, for those of you that are watching, listening, Thanks for being a part of this. I hope you have a great summer. Don't hear anything that we said give you permission not to come to church. Uh, if you go to our church, come every single Sunday Absolutely. that you're here. Um, and uh, and we're thankful for what, uh, what, what you add to our church family. And if you're not a part of our local church family and you watch online or you just kind of join us for episodes like this, thanks for doing that. You are a part of us, even from a distance, and we love you. We'll see you next time on Between the Sundays. God bless.